Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about T-Mobile's 5G home internet service, but specifically we're going to be talking about the three gateways that T-Mobile offers for this service. Now I've had the opportunity to have each one of these gateways and I took the time to test each of them at a minimum of 30 days, but some of them for a little bit longer, and I wanted to share with you my experience. So for those of you that don't know, T-Mobile's 5G home internet service is just a, uh, a broadband connection that T-Mobile is offering to consumers over their 5G network. So you're using a cell phone tower uh, to get your home internet service. And this could be really great for people who live in a rural area where they might not have cable or fiber, um, or for those of you that just wanna save some money. So um, unfortunately, the the experience you're going to get with T-Mobile 5G home internet is going to vary dependent on area and how far away you are from a tower and some other things. Um, but enough about that. Uh, so uh, first things first, um, T-Mobile offers three gateways. The first one that they released was the Nokia 5G 21. And uh, the second gateway was the Arcadian KVD 21. And then the last one was the Sagemcom Fast 5688W. And so we're going to get into the differences between each of these and then uh, how well they work for me. So the very first gateway that T-Mobile came out with was the Nokia 5G21, which you see here. It features an LCD screen on the very top uh, of the gateway, and it's used because it's the only gateway that offers an internal battery. The battery size is 5,000 milliamps, and it can only be used to find a signal during setup. So there was a big misconception with this gateway that you would be able to run your T-Mobile home internet on the battery and take it with you on the go, and that's just simply not the case. Um, it's only for setup so that you can find the right signal. As for connections, it is a dual band Wi-Fi 6, which is 802.11ax. We have WPA2 and 3 for Wi-Fi security. It features two RJ45 Ethernet jacks. It does have a telephone jack and a USB port, but they're both not currently in use. And T-Mobile is recommending the maximum devices connected to this gateway as 64. For network, we have our 5G bands of N41 and N71, and our 4G LTE bands of B2, B4, B5, B12, B66, and B71. The firmware I used during this test was 1.2201.00.324. However, there is a newer firmware since I've done this test, and I have not tested that firmware. And speaking of firmware, this gateway has by far the best firmware uh, out of any of the gateways that T-Mobile has released. It has the most features, it has the best web interface, which you can see here on the screen, uh, and it's actually the only gateway that T-Mobile offers where you can actually turn off the Wi-Fi and add a third-party router without implementing some sort of hack. It's also the only gateway that allows you to do half of these things from your PC. Uh, every other device, it says that you have to use the mobile app and it's very limited. The next gateway that T-Mobile released was the Arcadian KVD21. Now this gateway does not feature an internal battery uh, and it does not have an LCD screen on the top. It's actually on the front and it has three buttons. The connections that it offers, it is also a dual band Wi-Fi 6 gateway, which is 802.11ax. But the difference here is that it's 4x4, multiple input, multiple output. Uh, it also features WPA2 and 3 for Wi-Fi security. It does have two uh, Ethernet plugs. It has two USB Type-C ports. One is used for powering the unit and one is for data. The data port is not yet functional. T-Mobile also uh, recommends 64 devices is the maximum devices connected to this gateway. And for our network connections, we've gained 5G band N66 and 4G LTE band B41 and B46. The firmware I used to test this device was 1.00.16. And since I've done the testing, again, there is a newer firmware available, which is 1.00.18 as of the making of this video but I did not test that. And we'll get into that in a little bit as to why I did not test it. The next and latest gateway that T-Mobile has released is the Sagemcom Fast 5688W. It also does not have an internal battery. 
Uh, it looks a lot like the Arcadian KVD-21, but the Sagemcom is actually taller. Uh, so that's the easiest way to tell them apart. For connections, it's very similar to the Arcadian. We have dual band Wi-Fi 6 with 802.11ax with 4x4 multiple input, multiple output. Uh, WPA2 and 3 for Wi-Fi security, two RJ45 Ethernet plugs. We have two USB ports, one for powering the unit and one for data. However, on this unit, the data one is functional. You have a maximum recommended device of 64, just like the previous two gateways. And for network, we've gained 5G band N24 and N77 and 4G uh, LTE band B26. The firmware I tested this on was 1.1.52. To keep it short, it's actually like a mile long. But if you go to the T-Mobile website, uh, that's how it's referenced. There are two newer firmware updates available since this test. Uh, 1.2.74 and 1.2.8a. Uh, and we'll get more into the actual firmware updates later on in the video. Now that we got all the technical stuff out of the way, let's talk about how well they did. So I have five bars of excellent service with each gateway and in my testing, my average ping with the Nokia 5G21 was 31 milliseconds with a Wi-Fi speed of 432 megabits per second. The Arcadian KV21 had an average ping of 78 milliseconds and a Wi-Fi speed of 319 megabits per second. And the Sagemcom Fast 5688W had an average ping of 48 milliseconds and a Wi-Fi speed of 470 megabits per second. But Josh, how many times did you have to unplug your gateway to keep your internet working? That's a great question. Let's get in to the disconnects. So this part might be no surprise to you guys. With the Nokia gateway, I had zero disconnects for the entire month. Uh, the Arcadian gateway, I had to unplug it and plug it back in literally every single day to keep my internet working. It was extremely frustrating. In the Sagemcom, I only had to do it one time. So I didn't even bother testing the firmware updates for the Arcadian KVD-21 because in my opinion, this thing is junk. If you received this and this is the only gateway you've ever used and you don't like T-Mobile 5G home internet, uh, I would strongly suggest that you try the Sagemcom or the Nokia 5G21. The Nokia has been rock solid. Um, the Sagemcom has actually been really good for me too. They did come out with a firmware update that bricked a bunch of the devices but for the most part uh, that's actually the one that I'm still using so I know I didn't include it in the testing but I'm on the latest firmware as of today and everything is still working great I get the best speeds uh, for the most part I have just the best ping everything else is just it's good in my opinion but the Nokia is also a very good gateway and like I said previously they actually have the best firmware in my opinion but I do like how the Sagemcom just offers more bands and so I just think that you get a better connection and better speed and that about does it for this one uh, make sure you guys hit me up in the comments below and let me know if you have T-Mobile 5G home internet service how well you guys are liking it uh, if you have any questions about the service make sure you hit me up in the comments we've had it for about a year so I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions and other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.